right, guys. Today we have a DIY for you that's all about lunch bags. It is lunch bag. Okay, so I feel like you go, you use lunch bags when you're little, and then you go through this phase where they're not cool, but they're totally in again. Yeah. Especially if you go to college like us, where you can bring your own lunches to school. Um, they're cool. And you don't want to bring a lunch a plastic bag. <laughs> So yeah, we created a super easy, like, it took us 10 minutes. Really easy. Um, lunch bag. And they're so much cuter than like the ones you can buy in Walmart or wherever you would get them. Yeah, exactly. They're brown paper bag inspired. Yes. <laughs> um, just the way their shape as well as even the color. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a couple different fabrics you can get. Uh, you can get just a plain canvas which they might have really pretty patterns and colors and stuff, but it might not be the best because it's probably not water resistant. Um, if you can get oil cloth or some kind of vinyl, those are a little bit harder to work with, but those are the most water resistant and uh, washable. Or ideally, you could just line whatever canvas you get with vinyl to make it extra waterproof. Yeah. Or you could just not spill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, accidents. That's our goal. <laughs> yeah. um, but what we went with was a um, outdoor like canvas so it's treated to be waterproof um it still might not hold like soup in if you entirely spill a bowl of soup in your bag but yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's definitely washable and um it's a little bit water resistant so to make it you're going to need to put your good sides of fabric together and we cut out a nine and a half by a 13 inch rectangle two rectangles so you're now going to stitch up the three sides two long edges and one short edge you can either use a sewing machine like we did, or you could do a simple hand stitch if you want. And if you really wanted to, we don't recommend it, but you could use glue for this. When you're done that, you're going to take your finished sewn product and you're gonna pull at the sides to fold it the other way in half, so your seams are on the top and bottom rather than the sides. And then you're going to fold your bottom portion into like a diamond shape. It'll come naturally, I think, if you just try it out. So once it's in this diamond shape, you're going to measure an inch and a quarter from the top point and the bottom point. Um, so you're just going to mark that line, pin it, and then cut it. So once you have your two edge triangles kind of cut off, I know it's a little scary, but then you're going to go in and stitch up that line and make sure that you really go over the middle stitch because we did cut that thread, so you're going to need to re-sew it tightly so it all stays together. And again, you can hand stitch or sewing machine this. And when you're done that, you can take it and turn it inside out, make sure it all looks good and it's a big rectangle and not some wonky shape. And then the next step is to iron. This is optional, but we think it just gives it that perfect paper bag shape and really helps it keep its shape. So we're basically going to be ironing the four lines up the side of the bag. So start from each corner of the base of the bag and kind of fold that line from the corner all the way up to the top of the bag, making sure that it's the same width all the way up. And just take your iron and kind of crease that line into place. And then go ahead and do that for all four sides of the bag. Mm -hmm. And then once you have that done, you can kind of fold the bottom how a paper bag would naturally yeah. be folded. Um, it just kind of makes sense when you're doing it. And then go ahead and just flatten that whole base down, which will create kind of the side corners that paper bag might have. And it just kind of gives it that overall paper bag shape and helps it to stand up nicer. And the very last step, depending on your fabric, is hemming the top edge. Um, so you can just use your iron, it's probably easiest, and fold the edges under. And then you can take it to the sewing machine and just do a stitch all the way around. It won't take that long. <laughs> and it'll just keep everything from fraying. Mm -hmm. So you're pretty much done, but we decided to think of a couple different ways to close it and keep it shut. So the first way that we decided to do was kind of like cookie bag inspired, how you might get them from the grocery store. So we took a piece of uh, gold wire, flat wire is the best, and measured it up to the top of the bag and you're going to want to extend it about a half an inch each side and you can go ahead and cut it to that length. And then we just folded, uh, wrapped the edges of the sides in, uh, A so it wouldn't be so sharp and B so this kind of stops it from sliding out once you've sewed it into place. And then we just went ahead and added two stitches on either end of the wire to hold it to the top of the bag. And then when you roll it down, you can just fold these end pieces that hang off the bag backwards and it should clip it into place and it won't unroll. If you've ever had a grocery store cookie bag, you'll know exactly how this works. Mmm, cookies. Mm, I want some. <laughs> And the other way was a button fastener, and this kind of works like an envelope. Um, 
Yeah, exactly like the it. The big file folder envelopes. Yes. So what you're gonna do is take a spare button and you're gonna first roll down your edge and see where you wanna put the button. And then you're gonna sew the button to place, really simple. And then on the back edge, pretty much exactly where you sewed the button, you're going to take a needle um, and some twine. We took a larger needle so the twine actually fit into the needle head. And then we just poked it in the one side and then tied a knot once it was on the inside and cut the thread and you tied another knot to the other end. <laughs> yeah, it stays in and it just kind of sits there. Um, and then when you roll it down, you can bring that twine over, wrap it around the button a couple times and it should stay in place and good to go. And obviously additional methods would be to use some Velcro or magnets or whatever you feel like doing. Or nothing. Or nothing. Just go with the roll look. It's yeah. the easiest way. <laughs> totally. <laughs> um, so we hope you guys enjoyed this and found it as simple as we did. It was like literally the easiest thing to do ever. So that was awesome. Yeah, we have lots of extra fabric, so we'll make some for our friends. Oh yeah. <laughs> and you literally be the coolest kid at the lunch table with like an awesome pattern lunch bag. And not your Sobeys or... Yeah. What's an American grocery store? Uh, Actually, Americans use pla paper bags, don't they? Whole Foods does. And they're really cool. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Okay, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> and these are more eco-friendly than using a paper bag, which you might have to throw out every single day. These are washable and totally reusable. Yep. And cute. So cute. Yeah, those not I don't know what cute is. <laughs> If you guys make any of these, make sure to send us photos on Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, all those lovely places. See you next week. Bye. Bye.